Hello, everyone. I'm Nathan Newbro, and I'm the CEO of the Colorado Springs Philharmonic. And I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by my friend, Joanne Folletta, who is joining us on the podium uh, very soon. And we're just delighted to have you here with us over Zoom. We get to talk with you and, and chat a bit about the upcoming performance. Joanne, welcome. Thank you so much, Nathan. I am looking forward tremendously to being back in Colorado, to being in Colorado Springs. It, it's just going to be a joy. Yeah, well, it, it, we were talking just now, and you've been here before, but it's been quite a while at this point. It's been quite a while. It's been and, quite but a while. you know, my very, very first job was in the state. It was in Denver with the Chamber Orchestra, which is, I don't think exists anymore. But so I have, a, I always have in my mind what a beautiful place Colorado is. And we went down to the Springs a number of times, and uh, I just can't wait to return. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you remember the Pikes Peak Center very well, and our, our musicians will remember working with you for sure. And so we're looking forward to this performance. This is a varied program. This is, uh, and, and we were just we were just discussing, it's hard to find the thematic thread that just knits all of these wonderful works together, but it's something people will not want to miss. Should we should we walk through some, some of these? Yeah, you know, and, and yeah, you're right. I mean, it's some programs do have the theme and everything is unified. In this case, we talked about it for so long and we wound up with just four fantastic pieces. So hopefully that's enough. <laughs> it's very varied. <laughs> well, and you know, before we do that, we should mention that COVID actually impacted our first opportunity to work together uh, back in, uh, in 2020. And so that, that one went by the wayside. This is a different program than, than the one originally conceived. And I, but I'm just thrilled. What a way to end our season too. Um, and so let's, let's dive right in. We've, we've, we're starting with the Mozart Hafner, uh, Symphony Number no. 35. Um, for people who might not be familiar with, with Hafner, um, bring, bring us into this work, which you've conducted many times, I know. It's so joyful because um, it started out as a serenade. Mozart was just about to get married and his father wrote to him and said, you have to write some music for our friends, friends of our families, the Hafners. You remember the Hafners, their son is getting an award. You must write something. And Mozart at first said, I don't think I can. I, I, I have all these things I must do when I'm about to get married. Uh, but his father insisted and he said, of course I will. And he wrote um, a six movement serenade. And of course, knowing that it was a happy occasion for the Hoffners, it's filled with joy. And uh, a little bit later, maybe a year later, he asked his father to send back the parts because he thought he would play it in Vienna. He said, I wrote it so quickly, I don't even remember it. So send them back to me. And he made it into a four movement symphony. But because it was sort of, uh, uh, sort of changed from six to four movements, it's quite short and serenades are generally more lighthearted. So it's, it's just a beautiful, happy, wonderful example of Mozart genius. Yeah. Well, and you know, on this program, we also have two works of American composers, Roberto Sierra, who ends the program and uh, Kevin puts, and Joanne, you've worked with American composers your entire career. Um, this has been a passion of yours, I think. It is, it is, absolutely. Since, since being in school and seeing, getting to know young composers and knowing how exciting their music could be and how much we as conductors could do to help them, I, I've loved working with living American composers. And I know the music of Kevin Poots, but I have never conducted a piece. So I'm thrilled that I get to do his marimba concerto. And what a beautiful piece this is. Yes. Absolutely. The marimba, marimba concerto. And I, I would challenge our audience to remember the last time they saw a marimba concerto. Now, a marimba is, is a, like a large xylophone for people maybe not familiar with the instrument family. Um, so a marimba concerto, I, I, I don't remember the last time I saw a marimba concerto. No. Uh, and, you know, they'll be surprised by the sound because... Uh, if, if they're not imagining the marimba sound, they will be shocked at how beautiful it is. It is uh, mellow, it is um, lyrical, it's just an extraordinary instrument. Yeah, yeah. and in the hands of this, this 
amazing young artist, Ji Su Jung, who's joining us for this performance as well. Maybe we'll get to do a different interview with her. Uh, this is an opportunity to see the marimba in the hands of a, uh, a, a truly gifted uh, young up and comer. So we're, we're in, excited to have her with us as well. And the Roberto Sierra, uh, you've done Fandangos yes. several times before. What a way to end the program and end the entire concert season. Um, tell, just give us a, a flavor. What we well, you know, about. Roberto is, was born in Puerto Rico. And so he has a whole sort of language of, of Latino culture. And, and, uh, and he goes back in time. I mean, he goes really way back to, to find this beautiful Fandango theme uh, all the way back to 17th century. But he does special things with it. I mean, you always hear that theme, which is a dance movement, um, but becomes very uh, sort of contemporary. But it keeps on going. And I, one of my musicians, when I did this, had a perfect description of it. He said, "This is what Bolero would have sounded like if Ravel had ever visited Barcelona." <laughs> It is a little bit like Valero. I want to warn people. It's that kind of piece. It just grows and goes on. And, you know, he adds uh, instruments and it, it just gets so thrilling, uh, always repeating the same rhythm uh, over and over again. Um, it is a masterpiece. I mean, I'd so, it's so much fun to do this. Yeah, well, thank you for thank you for suggesting it for this program. I, I'm excited about that. But the centerpiece, uh, maybe we can say the centerpiece of this program is Copeland's Appalachian Spring, and uh, and if that, of course, and that's the the title of the of the weekend for us. Um, Appalachian Spring holds a special place in a lot of our hearts. Tell us what your experience is with Aaron Copeland, another American composer. Um, you've you've conducted his works many many times, um, but how 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 do you approach uh, this quintessential American composer? You know, I, I, I am still in awe of this piece. I've done it many, many times. And every time I do it, it really brings me to tears because in it, Copeland has created a voice for our country. I mean, when we hear this, we hear the voice of the United States. We hear the voice not only of Appalachia, but of the mountains, of the prairies. It's us. And he does it with such simplicity and reverence and, and goodwill. Um, to me, it's a sacred piece of, of our country, and and um, uh, there's nothing quite like it. It was, and I know our audience has heard it before, but but I hope they'll be moved by by the, the just the spirit of Aaron Copeland. It, it's, he, it's, we're right to call him the father of American music. He he really is, and uh, this piece is a classic for all time. Well, again, thank you for joining us for this program. I'm glad to talk about the music. I also want to talk about you, Joanne, because uh, because you've had you know such a, an amazing career, and you're not done yet. I mean, the Grammy Awards, all the recording, the, uh, the the simply amazing work that you've done with the Buffalo Philharmonic as their music director, the Virginia Symphony, and and so many other orchestras around the country. Um, you you cast a big shadow for lots of up and coming conductors. And I, for the viewers, I want to make sure that they know that I cleared this question with you in advance. <laughs> because you are, you are, you are, you're the real deal. Um, and, uh, and much more than just a gender, but you have, you have ascended to a, pro, a place of prominence as a conductor, as a woman conductor, um, in, in a, a period of time when, when the, the world of music was really tra in transition. And so I wonder if you can talk with us about what that what that experience has been like to uh, to come up in a let's face it a male dominated field and and hold your own in in a way that uh, that it maybe may have been daunting for others. Well, it was very different, you know. When I was at Juilliard in the eighties, mm -hmm. um, I was the only woman in the class, and I just am very thankful to Juilliard that they were willing to admit a woman into the conducting class. You know, it was a time that maybe things were beginning to change. Um, people were still skeptical. I have to be honest, there were people skeptical. I remember the first time I went to Europe and, uh, and or to South America, there was a lot of skepticism about could a woman do this? But Juilliard said yes. And uh, I was very lucky to, to be there and to start working. And then of course, to have my first job with the Denver Chamber Orchestra, which was a very big moment for me. But, um, I thought then that things would change very quickly, Nathan, and I was wrong. 
I just thought, well, you know, now we see women doing everything. I mean, as bank presidents and politicians and doctors, um, but it took a long time in the music world. We, our, our profession is a very traditional, traditional one. So it took a long time. Now I think finally, uh, we're seeing more and more women on the podium. So, but it's taken you know, decades to get there. And uh, I just feel very, very lucky. I feel like I'm living my dream and that there were those opportunities. And, and I have to admit, I'm sure that there are still some people who feel like women shouldn't be conductors, but, but uh, I think there are enough of us now that we can say, <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> Yes, yes, you can for sure. And, and you know, it, you've been you've been a role model, but you've also been a mentor to to many, many uh, students of music, uh, young conductors, and I believe young composers as well who are who are aspiring, but um, and maybe have not reached a level of prominence yet. What do, what kinds of advice do you give to the next generation of conductors, composers, musicians? as they approach this, this field of work, which can be still, as you say, even now very daunting. It is daunting. It's always daunting in a music career. And I try and encourage them to be patient because it's a lifelong journey. You know, it's, it's not something that you're going to say at the age of 25, I've arrived. And you wouldn't want to do that. It's, it's a long journey and a very thrilling journey, but it's one you dedicate your whole life to. You really do. And it's... Um, it's a beautiful thing to be in the middle of music, but it requires your devotion to it. And, and I'm glad to be able to talk to them because they, they need advice. They need someone to ask questions that might seem silly to them, but, but we've all had the same thoughts and issues and problems. So um, I feel very lucky that people do call me. They call me, they write to me. They come, they come to Buffalo very often. They come to Buffalo, spend a week and watch the orchestra and, uh, and that's great because I think the only way we can keep our art form flourishing is by helping each other. And that's another big lesson I tell them, you know, be generous with your colleagues and help them, help young composers. If you're a conductor and you have the opportunity, play their music uh, because we, we can do this together. We can do this together for sure, for sure. Well, Joanne, thank you so much for joining us here, here in Colorado Springs. You haven't arrived yet, but we can't wait. And uh, we, we look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Well, thank you, Nathan. This has been a great pleasure. I can't wait now. I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.